In this video, we've got an intense complex of storms gonna bring very large hail, damaging winds, and even a possible derecho forming as record heat builds to the south and a more zonal flow builds to the north. Welcome back everyone. Hope everyone is enjoying your weekend out there. We've got a lot to cover in the weather department. So let's take a look at the overall satellite picture this morning for your Sunday. And we can definitely see this swirl out here in the open waters of the Atlantic. That is now what has become Tropical Storm Alex that dumped a lot of heavy rain as the potential tropical cyclone yesterday over Florida. That has safely moved off into the open waters of the Atlantic, but is now officially formed into a tropical system with 50 mile per hour winds and is expected to top out around 60 miles an hour as it continues to move out in the open waters and, and bring some rain showers into the uh, portions of Bermuda. But you can turn your attention to these areas off to the north. You can almost see the Northwest flow set up. This is really prevalent this time of year. And this whole complex of storms that's impacting portions of Kansas and Oklahoma this morning, those are gonna be continued to dive southward and dissipate, but back behind it, it's gonna be leaving a boundary that's gonna be setting the stage for our intense complex of storm systems that are gonna be propagating over into the overnight hours. So let's take a look at the overall radar setup this morning. So you can definitely see off the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, there is Alex safely moving off, moving off to sh offshore. And then as we get into the middle of the country, you can see that complex of storm systems coming out of Kansas through Oklahoma this morning with a lot of lightning and very heavy rain. Those are going to continue to dive southward, and as they do, they're going to be dissipating over time. But like I mentioned back behind it, they are going to be leaving an important boundary that's going to be setting the stage for a more intense complex of storms that are going to be moving across in the middle of the country in the overnight hour. So you definitely have to be weather aware. And in fact, the upgraded storm prediction center from the 8 a.m. advisory has an enhanced uh, an increased risk and enhanced risk for severe storms as that second complex of storm system is really going to be getting its act together into the overnight hours it probably really didn't start to come to fruition until 9 10 o'clock this this evening and then into the overnight hours so they do have an enhanced risk for severe storms across portions of Nebraska, heading into Kansas all the way through central Oklahoma as this very intense storm system is gonna be really getting its act together and diving southward into the overnight hours. And here, let's, let's break down the overall hazard map for this is your hail. And we could be looking at some, some pretty significant hail. We got a lot of updrafts with this system. Cloud tops are gonna to be reaching 55 to 60,000 feet up in the atmosphere. So that is a huge area that uh, could be under the gun for some very large hail. That is your golf ball size hail that will do significant damage to your, your vehicles if, if, if they are left outside. So this is a, a pretty significant event that could unfold into the overnight hours of this whole area, basically into Nebraska, heading through Kansas, all the way down into central Oklahoma are going to be are going to be under the culprit of seeing some of those larger hailstones and they could be upwards from golf ball and even potentially up to three inches in diameter so that is some definitely some intense hail that, that are going to be impacting uh those areas into the overnight hours but the main risk with this setup is going to be your very damaging winds i think they're initially going to start off with about 60 miles an hour these are really going to be getting its act together upwards to 70 miles an hour and it's not out of the question we could be looking at some 80 even some possible 90 mile per hour winds because this is the latest wording from the storm prediction center they have some significant severe thunderstorms producing very large hail and intense damaging winds and even a possible few tornadoes can't be rolled out in portions of oklahoma and kansas and nebraska into the late late tonight into the overnight time frame but especially they have included the wording of even a possible upgrade to a moderate risk for severe storms uh, like i mentioned this is about eight o'clock in the morning as i'm recording this video and this setup really doesn't really get going into the overnight hours so there's going to be plenty of more time to look at this system and, and possible upgrades but they did highlight worst case scenario if they really congeal together and start bowing out 
that would support a possible duratio forming into the overnight hours as this massive mesoscale convective system really gets its act together and moves uh, southward. So yeah, let's take a look at the instability because we're talking some pretty extreme values of your Cape values. Those are what anytime you see values in the three, four, five thousand range, that some some significant instability in the atmosphere. So definitely you need to be weather aware into the overnight hours in Kansas and Nebraska and going into Oklahoma as these storms are gonna be really intense, packing some very large hail and some damaging winds. And yes, tornadoes can't be rolled out on the leading edge of that squall line. And if it does actually, you know, get together with that straight line winds and really elongate, yeah, that duratio can't be rolled out and the atmosphere is going to be spinning. So uh, it's not significantly. They do have, you know, two to five percent tornado risk. But I think some of these areas could even be expanded portions of Kansas and getting into Oklahoma along that uh, leading edge of that squall line into the overnight hours and that's what makes this uh, threat a little bit more damaging is it is going to be an overnight setup where a lot of you guys are going to be in bed sleeping you know because a lot of this activity won't come to fruition until midnight th one two three four o'clock in the morning time frame because we could take a look at the overall radar depiction about 11 o'clock so i stopped it right here about 11 o'clock we could be looking at some some serious storm cells heading over of haze getting into dodge city you see these little blues in the and the radar depiction that would be indicative of some very intense supercell thunderstorms some pretty big hail producers down here into portions of wichita heading into portions of you know omaha omaha getting into lincoln so these storm systems are really going to be congealing together and when they do into the overnight hours one two three four o'clock in the morning i stopped to hear about four o'clock in the morning so we could be looking at some pretty intense supercells heading into portions of kansas city getting all the way down into portions all the way extending into tulsa and you can see this latest radar run of uh, from the high resolution guidance these short short range high resolution guidance these are starting to bow out. It's already starting to take that kind of shape of some bow echoes trying to form. And then whenever you see that on radar, that is always indicative of some of those increased wind gusts. And that's where they can bump up to those 70, 80. And if those really start to bow out, yeah, 90 miles an hour can't be rolled out with this particular setup if it does actually congeal together. So yeah, I mean, we've got plenty of time to watch this throughout the day. And you so you definitely need to be weather aware up here into portions of, of Nebraska, getting into Kansas, going into Oklahoma, because this is going to be an overnight setup in the middle of the night. And let's take a look at the overall, you know, HRRR wind gust for the next, you know, 24, 36, 48 hours. <laughs> and you can see in the middle of the country here, you can almost see it look like ribs. <laughs> that is an indi ind indication of some very intense winds setting up shop over portions of getting into, starting in essentially uh, Nebraska here, heading through Kansas, but especially if that, you know, squall line really starts to get together and start to bow out, we could be looking at some pretty intense winds heading through Oklahoma through in the middle of the night. And yeah, look at where the HRRR max is at about 98 miles an hour. So we already have model guidance kind of hinting of that, of this potentially trying to come together. So yeah, it would not be out of the question that this would be upgraded, at least portions of it be upgraded to a moderate risk as we get through the afternoon. So you definitely need to be weather aware up here into Kansas, into Oklahoma. But for the rest of the country for today, there's Alex. It's, it's officially formed. It's going to be moving safely offshore into the open waters of the Atlantic. Uh, but yeah, we got this boundary, right? So you got this, this warm front lifting to the north. We get this northwest flow and then nor just north of there, that's where all the instability is going to be. But for the rest of the country, we've got a little bit more of a what they call zonal flow really starting to take shape well to the north into the Pacific Northwest. That's going to be traversing across into portions of Montana and all this instability and the more you know calmer weather, more a little bit more, I guess, 
you know, more unsettled, more, you know, seasonably cooler weather up farther to the north. You can have the little bit more unstable conditions in the middle of the country. And then you got just the ridge of high pressure going to be dominating for a good chunk of the south. And we're going to be talking plenty of record heat that's going to be on the table as we get deeper into next week so here's the setup for sunday with these temperatures starting to creep well into the hundreds here in the desert southwest out here in west texas where they have been drier so where you where you have been drier out here del rio 107 degrees as you start moving towards uh, dallas fort worth you know 94 today that's not that bad because your average high temperature is 90 degrees now so this is kind of what you expect but yeah, those are going to be creeping towards triple digit con con you know conditions as we get he you know heading into the portions of the end of the week. But you can definitely see where the cooler conditions are well to the north with that zonal flow. So if you want to escape the heat, all you got to do is head northward and you got plenty of 60s and 70s to to to, uh, to welcome <laughs> your arrival. So but yeah, let's take a look at Monday cuz that with that warm front just kind of basically stalling and the northwest flow alive, that boundary just kind of more or less stalls out. So as the complex comes again, comes through off the northwest flow, those northwest winds aloft yes we could be looking at another complex of storms kind of blowing up over portions of kansas into the oklahoma panhandle as we get into monday time frame and then out ahead of that there's a little cool front so not not uh you know more more you know you're you're talking widespread 70 degree temperatures with just kind of sporadic rain showers over portions of o ohio you know the ohio valley getting into the mid-atlantic states but for the south of you heading into wednesday it's just those you know those warmer temperatures can just continue to build you can see this kind of sharp gradient you got widespread hundreds down here in the desert southwest hundreds filtering in that heat's building widespread 90s you go further to the north you got a little bit more instability in the middle of the country you go further to the north you just got widespread 70s so it's going to be really kind of nice out here if you if you live up here into the dakotas and minnesota and wisconsin and out up here underneath a little bit more sporadic rain showers it's just going to be rain cooled air up here into portions of uh, of the northeast so and you can definitely see that on the surface map as we get into wednesday kind of along that cold front that's just going to be kind of sitting still producing those just kind of sporadic showers up here nothing really severe or anything like that just been just cooler conditions because the cat cloud cover and just kind of sporadic showers up here you try to get you know northwest flows these you know june's always these times of year that you could have these little outflow boundaries that form out ahead of these you know this these systems as these mesoscale convective systems try to propagate and push further south but i don't think they make it they make you know basically kind of stop it uh, along the red river so i'm not expecting any more storm development really in, in through portions you know further out further south into texas but yeah heading into thursday kind of the same deal with that you know that that cooler conditions you know continue to push off into a little bit further off into the northeast so it's going to be pretty pretty seasonally mild out here into portions of the northeast but just kind of sporadic rain showers uh you're going to be dealing with as you get into the portions of the mid into later half of the week but there's friday and you can definitely see the heat just continues to expand and intensify we're starting to see 111s in the desert southwest we've got 113s here we got plenty of hundreds i think that i think by friday uh dallas is going to be your first official 100 degree day as the heat will start to really start to intensify down there and that's just the that's just what you know what the heat is and, and the feels like temperatures are going to be you know start approaching these heat advisory criteria. and heat is definitely nothing to play with and this is just i think what's to come for this uh pretty intense summer that i'm definitely expecting down here into portions of the southwest and getting into texas with some pretty intense heat building as we get deeper into summer but yeah look at the look at the widespread 70s it's just uh depends on where you live i mean you're going to be experiencing again really nice conditions if you live further off to the to the north so but let's take a look at the overall rain setup over the next you know get you through your work week so there's 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 alex right so you got all the rain showers that that produced all the heavier rain in south florida yesterday you just kind of have sporadic showers back behind it but all the heavier rain is pushed well off into the open waters 
uh, up here into the Atlantic. And then you have this zonal flow, right? So you got this zonal flow coming off the Pacific Northwest and you got rain showers along the coastline, along the Northern California, and then lesser, lesser amounts as you move into the interior regions. But then as the warm front, you know, is pretty much stalled further to the north, you got all the instability in the middle of the country. And then you just have these boundaries setting up shop in our northern tiers and then just sporadic showers that will produce, you know, kind of one to two inches of rain over the course of the week. What's to, what's to come for portions of the Ohio Valley and the the north uh the northeast so hey i appreciate you guys uh watching do like this video definitely check out the my uh, tropical update as well so what may be coming in the caribbean after alex i think that's going to be our next storm system that's going to be coming uh in, into the caribbean so that's going to be the area to watch so definitely be be uh looking out for that video as well at the end of this one so do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update why i protect you before and after the storm